Well done, Lisa. Let's see, a, a pugilist versus a Penske. I think my money's on Penske every time, right? I think that's, uh, that's got to be the winner in that book. Um, we ordinarily would take a quick break for dessert, but we're going to move ahead because we're a little bit behind on the program, so we encourage you to go ahead and eat your dessert as they are delivered to your table. At this time, I'd like to welcome the President and Chief Operating Officer of IMSA, Scott Atherton. Scott? I'll echo Bobby and say thank you, Doctor. For the record, uh, I speak tonight on behalf of NASCAR, International Speedway Corporation, and IMSA. So as a result of combining all three of those, I've been allocated a full hour. So <clears throat> now, tonight you've heard uh, what has earlier been described as could be a toast, could be a roast. I'm going to give you a documentary because one thing I think we all have in common is we wonder, quite often, how does he do it? How does Roger operate at the level that he does? Car dealerships, truck leasing, race teams, diesel engines, countless other businesses. He remembers every name. He remembers so many things. It's frightening. I'm going to give you a snapshot in time. So come with me back to 1997. At that time, I'm the president of Laguna Seca Raceway. And I always said the only way we would ever justify leaving paradise is if Roger Penske called and asked me to run one of his tracks. Now, at that time, there was Penske Motorsports, a publicly traded New York Stock Exchange company. And the idea of going to work for Penske was simply too good to pass. So we moved from Monterey, California, Carmel, to Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's another story for another night. But we make the move, and the way the timing worked out, there was still the middle of the season at Laguna Seca. It was not appropriate to leave right away. So we came to an agreement that I would work out for an extended period of time and then join as the new president of Nazareth Speedway. But as only Roger could do, he thought ahead and thought, you know, we've got this CapEx meeting organized, and if the new president of the track is not involved, that's not a good thing. So Scott, could you possibly come out for a couple of days? We'll make it quick, we'll make it efficient, but I think it's important you be a part of this. We'll fly you out on the red eye, we'll pick you up, we'll spend the day, we'll get you right back. No problem. The plan is, 6.30 the next morning, I'm to be picked up at the Detroit airport by Greg Penske, and we go directly out to Michigan Speedway, where all of the track presidents have assembled. We assemble in the conference room, and as we walk in, so the plane arrives probably about 5.30 in the morning. You drive to Michigan. It's about 7 a.m. We come walking in. The boardroom's there. Roger's already at the head of the table. There's books at each place setting, and all I hear is, you guys are late. Come on, we're burning daylight. Let's get going. We sit down, and we spend the next couple of hours doing a deep dive P&L into all of the different business units that are there. Keep in mind, it's Michigan Speedway, it's Nazareth Speedway, it's Rockingham, it's Homestead. And I'm around all the different track presidents. Roger's leading the meeting. We're going 100 miles an hour, covering the details. Finally, he says, all right, let's go tour the facility. Gene Haskett, president of Michigan, we're going to do your CapEx review and see what we're going to do here. Get downstairs into a 14-passenger van, Roger behind the wheel. And I'm making this mental note. Wow, that's impressive. The guy's driving us around. So we go out to the track. Roger jumps out in the back. The first thing he grabs is one of those measuring wheels and starts pacing off. Gene, I think we put the corner here. I think we face it this way. We do that. We go here. We're looking at concession stands, maybe a new medical facility. We spend the whole day at Michigan Speedway. The plan is we then go to Nazareth. So we hustle back into the van. We're back on the plane off to Nazareth, the whole time we're on the plane, business, 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 we're working, we're going through it, deeper dive into the financials. We get off the plane, new van, bam, Roger behind the wheel. <laughs> Drive over to Nazareth Speedway, same thing. Everybody on the staff comes up, bigs, hugs, how's the family, what's going on, how's great, good, on we go. Now Nazareth Speedway is still very much under development back then. It needs a lot of stuff. So this is, again, a full effort. And the hours go by, and the darkness comes, and we are literally taking track vehicles with headlights and shining them in the general direction we want to go in. There's that measuring wheel. We're going for a new media center, a new concession building. We need a new medical facility, on and on and on. 
Now, about eight o'clock that night, Roger leans over to me and says, uh, so how are you getting back? I said, well, I'm, uh, I'm actually going to spend the night here tonight, and I've got a plane tomorrow right out of uh, Nazareth here and uh, Allentown, back to Chicago, back to San Francisco, back to Monterey. Well, that's crazy. Why don't you just come back with me tonight? We'll get you a hotel room, and you can fly out of Detroit tomorrow and go straight back. Now, I'm thinking to myself, I know the plane with all of the other track presidents is headed down to Rockingham because that's the next stop on the tour. So how's that going to work? He goes, don't worry about it. There's another plane in the air. It's coming for me right now. So, well, okay. Um, I guess I'm in. So we finish up darkness, drive back to the airport. It's probably close to midnight. And we say goodbye to the other guys. Sure enough, there's a second plane there. They get on that plane that we've been on. They head off to Rockingham. Roger and I get on the, single, the other plane, two of us in the back. And the plane takes off. And uh, you know, two minutes into the flight, so tell me, what's your first impression of Nazareth? We go through Q&A. What are we going to do? What's the vision, the potential? You know, we've, we've got this race going. We've got that race going. It's, I'm going to say, somewhere between 1 o'clock, maybe 1.15. Roger looks over at me and he says, uh, I think I'm going to get some sleep. And a nice blanket comes out from behind the, the seat. Seat back goes. And I'm going to say, count to 10, out. So now keep in mind, I've flown a red eye from San Francisco. I've been picked up at the airport at 6 AM, out to Michigan, into Nazareth. It's now 1.30 in the morning the next day. I'm in the back of a corporate jet going 550 miles an hour with Roger Penske sitting next to me. Day one, I look out the window and I'm thinking, what in the hell have I gotten myself into? <laughs> the plane lands. The wheels, as soon as that occurs, lights up, eyes open, blanket folded, military straight, crisp crease, placed back where it belongs behind the seat, gathers the briefcase. Scott, it's been a good day. It's a good trip. Look forward to working with you. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. As his foot hits the ground on the asphalt, he snaps around, looks back up at the flight crew, and says, 5.30, don't be late. Now, you do the math, and that's one day in the life. And if you ever question how does he do it, all I can tell you is that wasn't a special day. That was a typical day. And Roger, you're the one being honored here tonight. But I think I speak for all of us when I say it's an honor for us to know you, for the lucky few that have had a chance to work with you. Uh, it's our honor. And my answer to how do you do it is I don't think there's anyone that rings more out of a 24-hour clock than Roger Penske. And I know I speak for everyone in the room when I say we hope that continues for many, many years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. As you know, the Salem six-hour race is this weekend at Watkins Glen International. And Watkins Glen has undergone so many changes since it became a permanent race course back in 1956. In 1997, International Speedway Corporation took over, and it continued to improve in stature, thanks in large part to International Speedway Corporation President John Saunders, who is here this evening. John, what you and your staff have done at Watkins Glen and Daytona, the tracks, it's absolutely amazing. You should be very proud, and we're all proud to see what you've accomplished. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of Watkins Glen International, please welcome Watkins Glen President Michael Prenta. Hello. I got to do something first. Just my perspective, and I spent a couple years with Roger, so oh, I'm a little off. 
Sorry, Roger. It took me twice. I, you know, I started at California Speedway um, 20 years ago, two weeks ago, and um, it was an amazing experience, so that's all I have to say, but that was part of my experience was detail, and part of my experience in this um, whole motorsports, and Roger and his whole team got me hooked. Uh, Les Richter was my protector. Um, if, uh, I think all of us know Les Richter. Uh, Roger used to pepper me with questions, and Les to go, get behind me, kid. I got gotcha. you. And, um, but it was all the good days, and Roger, this night's for you. I won't belabor this, but I will tell you, a friend of mine handed me a program tonight from, I hate to say this, but I will, 1961, uh, October 13, 14, 15, Roger was racing with Jack Brabham, Bruce McLaren, Briggs Cunningham, and the field was led by Phil Hill here at Watkins Glen. Um, pretty amazing what he's accomplished. I mean, it, we all have the stories. We, we, a lot of us have worked for him in this room, but I can tell you on behalf of International Speedway Corporation, on behalf of Watkins Glen International, Roger, I owe my career to you for starting. Uh, understand uh, what you did for me. Uh, Walt, Les, Rich Peters, uh, your whole group. Um, I started to understand what it meant. And, and today I still hold true to that and do my best to uphold what you taught me and what your team taught me um, in my career at California Speedway. And then subsequently joining ISC um, during the merger and then moving on. So, um, Roger, I can't say enough. Uh, and, and I could go on and on like everybody else has. They've already named everything. But like Scott said, it was an honor. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, some days during those construction meetings on Saturday, Scott, you mentioned, you know, the 8 a.m. He flew from Detroit. He took the red eye to California. We started at, you know, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, went to 8, 9 o'clock at night uh, during the pre-construction of building California Speedway, and we went all day long, and I'd come home and tell my wife, I'm like, this guy's nuts. <laughs> I, I'm like, we worked all day, you know, and then we went all night. But it, when you see his energy, it, it builds energy in you, and, and, and I know that's why Roger does it. Um, it's built energy in me, sometimes my energy. Um, I portray and I, I, I live from what you taught me. Um, though you didn't pull me aside, never teach me, you taught me. So I want to say thank you and I appreciate it and welcome as a board member of the Motorsports Research Center. Joe Salen, thank you for sponsoring this weekend. Continental Tire as well, obviously. We really appreciate it, but Roger, this one's for you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Our next speaker, please welcome, uh, he is the president of IndyCar Competition and Operation for the Verizon IndyCar Series. Welcome, Jay Fry. Good evening. Um, I'm incredibly humbled and honored to be here on that, be here on behalf of IndyCar. Um, what Mr. Penske and Penske Racing has done for IndyCar has been immeasurable over the years. Uh, one of the ways we thought we could measure it tonight, I don't know, are there Yankee fans in the building? <laughs> We're in upstate New York, so anyway. There's always this comparison. So the captain has been racing and winning in the United States since 1958 and has scored victories in every series where he has competed. With 23 national racing championships, including 13 in, Indy race, in IndyCar racing. Penske racing has often been referred to as the New York Yankees of uh, motorsports. So if you look at the actual stats, Penske's stats in IndyCars are better than the Yankees in terms of titles. Yankees world championship percentage is 23.7%, 27 titles in 115 years. Now we as race people understand statistics. Penske's IndyCar championship percentage is 27.6%, 13 titles in 47 seasons. So it's better than Yankees. Perfect. Penske's Indy 500 winning percentage is even better, better where he's won a record 16 times from his first as an entrant at Indianapolis. Penske's cars have won 34% of the time, a record 16 wins. So in reality, I think the, uh, the Yankees should be called the Penske Racing of Baseball. That would be more appropriate. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, from a, a personal perspective, um, again, uh, we talked a little bit about my future before, or what I had done in the past. 
1996, I was 30 years old, and we started, a, me and some partners started a NASCAR Winston Cup team. Winston Cup, so that goes back a few years. Um, from scratch. We were a few races into our, our first season, and we are in our garage area, and out of the blue, Mr. Pensy comes over to our garage area. Comes and tells us how proud he is of us, tells us um, what a phenomenal job we are doing. If there's anything he can ever do for um, us, please don't hesitate to call. You know, gives us his numbers, that whole thing. That was uh, um, it, certainly a defining moment. I mean, we were amazed that he even knew who we were, that he even knew we were out there. We had no idea that, you know, any of this stuff. So it made a huge impact um, on our team and, our, and actually the future of that team. Um, so over the years, we had many of those visits, but there was never any one like that first one. And that's one of the things that I think is really cool. We weren't special, but he certainly made us feel very special. And um, you know, for that, I'll always be very grateful that he's done that. So thank you. I'm quick. Is that quick? Stats and Thank you very much, Jay. Next up is a longtime member of Team Penske. He's the executive vice president of Penske Corporation, and he is vice chairman of Team Penske. Team Penske. Please welcome Walt Zarnicki. Thank you, Jerry, and good evening, everyone. It's really an honor for me to be here this evening. I was thinking about it. I think that tonight we really celebrate three things at, at this occasion. First, of course, the wonderful work of the IMRRC and its work of, of preserving the heritage and legacy of, of our great sport. Second, of course, is the 50th anniversary of Team Penske, and third, is the presentation of the Cameron Argetsinger Award to Roger later this evening. As many of you know, Roger and I have worked together, been business associates and good personal friends for more than 45 years. So you might think that being so close for all that time, my perspectives might be a little bit biased, and you'd be absolutely correct. However, I assure you I'll do my absolute best tonight to be as objective as I can. You know, Albert Einstein once wrote, imagination is more important than knowledge. He really wasn't diminishing the value of, of education as an ingredient for success with that comment. But rather, he was pointing out that someone who has imagination and creativity is really someone special. It's the ability to take that mental leap. It's the ability to see things differently than others do than to act positively on that conclusion. So by Einstein's definition, Roger Penske is really special. And probably more than any other quality that he possesses, it's his ability to think two steps ahead that differentiates him from his peers in business and in auto racing. You know, he's been described as a visionary. He's been described as a very successful business person and a much sought after civic leader. But in our, in our years together, I, I can tell you, he responds most favorably to the term racer. That word captures all that he is in all those other roles. So for tonight's purpose, let's focus and concentrate on that word racer, okay? Uh, someone's mentioned some of the numbers. I want to give you a little bit more. I think they, they bear repeating at this point. Penske Racing, under his management and guidance, has won 433 major race wins in NASCAR, Formula One, IndyCar, and sports car racing. We've had 499 pole positions, maybe 500 this weekend at Daytona, uh, and 28 national championships in a variety of disciplines. That impressive litany of accomplishment includes 16 Indianapolis 500 titles, two Daytona 500 wins, a Sprint Cup championship, and along the way, an IROC program with Les Richter and Jason Norrie, who's here with us this evening, plus 25 years of operating some pretty high profile motor racing facilities in the United States. I think everybody in this room, excuse me, recognizes that in our sport, 
Times can generate the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And you can be sure that Roger has experienced both and everything in between. He stands out as a formidable leader, though, because he thoughtfully deals with and manages both extremes while never allowing the emotion of the moment to dictate the ultimate income or to direct his behavior. Allow me to share a couple of examples from our history. They go back quite a ways. The first is, is Mark Donahue's 1972 win at the Indianapolis 500. Certainly a meaningful day in the history of Team Penske. It was a day and a win in which arguably, and despite all the previous road racing successes, I think validated Team Penske as a, as a major player in the American motorsports scene. I recall speaking to Roger a day or so later uh, while I was still reveling in the moment. And uh, when I finished gushing, he said very simply, he said, you know, we have a race in Milwaukee this weekend. We've got to get ready for it. That said it all. What's done is done, good or bad. And we must focus on the future. Or that fateful day in May of 1974 at Talladega when a pit road accident critically injured two of our crewmen, Don Miller and John Woodard, who was here this evening, and severely injured uh, several others of our crew. Uh, Roger's effective and assertive management at that scene was manifest in a very, uh, very dire circumstance. I think all who were affected by that trauma will attest to Roger's calm, effective leadership, directed to the immediate care of the injured but then beyond to the longer healing process that took several months in the case of several years. And if you want someone to attest to it, you just need to talk to John Woodard. Of course, one of the highest of the highs was the 2008 Daytona 500 when Ryan Newman and Kurt Busch combined for a classic Team Penske 1-2 finish. George Vesey's column in the New York Times the next day was headlined, A Proven Winner Finally Finishes First at Daytona, end quote. Well, Roger's a proven winner, ladies and gentlemen, because through all that acclaim and through all that disappointment, he's constantly there for his team, whether it's Watkins Glen or Indianapolis or Talladega, Mid-Ohio, Laguna Seca, Bristol, or numerous other places, all the while making it happen, leading by example with a practiced self-control and unwavering loyalty to the team. And you know, for the last 50 years, it's not been, all, not been all about motor racing. Roger was simultaneously engaged in building a global on-highway transportation services company. Penske Racing and Penske Corporation are synonymous. Penske Racing is a brand in the commercial world as well. Racing is the one thing that our 53,000 worldwide employees in the United States, Western Europe, and Australia have in common. It's who we are as a company. And it's a company that was built utilizing the very same operating principles that Roger learned and still practices every week at the racetrack. Know your subject and have a vision as to what you want to do. Recruit a committed group of like-minded people who share that vision, who know what the end game is, and most importantly, how to get there. Prepare in detail, maintain a sense of urgency, and continually anticipate. Compete within the rules, because victory in business or in racing is a charade if not done honestly. Character counts. Let the team work hard, and always, always give the credit to others. Those are the hallmarks of a proven winner that George Vesey wrote about. I think it's a pretty simple formula for success in racing and in, and in life. So how much we who've been close to him have learned and how much better we are as individuals and managers as a result, the proof is in the pudding. So Roger, whether it's been racing, track ownership, automobile dealerships, engine manufacturing, truck leasing and logistics, you've done it all well. But most importantly, and I truly believe the essence of the man, is that he's done it with the highest integrity, 
true professionalism, an affection for and a reliance on the men and women who comprise the team, and all with an ever-present and genuine humility. So, Roger, congratulations on the Cameron Argett Singer Award. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, Walt, that was fabulous. Uh, character, integrity, professionalism, the essence of Roger Penske. I can't put it any better than that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if those of you who have been sitting here through most of the evening, I know how it is when you come to these events and you've, you're thinking to yourself, is now the time that I sneak out and go to the restroom? <laughs> Let me tell you, now is not the time. <laughs> because these next series of videos, you're going to want to see. I invite you to look at the screen right now as we hear from one of Roger's former race car drivers and two of his cohorts that are currently broadcasting on NBC Sports Formula One broadcast. Take a look. Good evening, Roger, and good evening to everybody assembled up there in Watkins Glen to make sure that Roger achieves his award, the uh, Cameron Ar Argentine Award for contributions to motor racing. And I can't think of anybody who's contributed more to motor racing than Roger Penske, probably worldwide, let alone just here in America. And I hope that everybody that's there to see this is well turned out. The gentlemen got their shirts tucked in, they got their ties <laughs> on straight, they got their hair combed nicely, uh, because I remember when I drove for Roger Penske two or three times, he suggested to me that I should have my hair cut. I demurred, but nevertheless, I want everybody there to be smartly turned out to see Roger achieve that really most uh, gratifying award. Roger, you'll be pleased to know that uh, Mr. Hobbs is dressed <laughs> accordingly, so he's still <laughs> following suit. Uh, I, I want to say congratulations to you. Um, I'll never forget when I first came to America some 15, 16 years ago, and it was at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it was early one morning, and I approached you basically shaking with fear and, and uh, anticipation. I asked you, would you have a second for a quick interview? And you said, absolutely, why not? I, nothing else is happening right now. And that stuck with me. But for whatever category of racing that you have been involved in, you have left your mark. And of course, most recently in my home country of Australia, V8 Supercars, when you went to Grand Am, you just raised the bar uh, wherever you went in whatever championship. And as David said, that not only um, kind of resonates here in the United States, but all around the motorsport world. Congratulations, Roger. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Mr. Penske. Uh, thank you very much for all your inspiration, your attention to detail and your pursuit of excellence in all things is legend uh, in international motorsport. You may be aware that my racing career is in Formula One, started on the European side of the Atlantic uh, with the likes of Ron Dennis and McLaren International. Ron Dennis and McLaren International's attention to detail absolutely the same of what you have achieved on the American side of the Atlantic and over in England Everybody knew the name of Penske because of that. Your wonderful attention to detail and what you've done for motorsport is absolutely outstanding. Congratulations. Roger, earlier this year we were able to corral some of your past drivers. Uh, there were some friends, uh, some close friends, even what a few considered to be frenemies. Uh, that wanted to provide a shout out or two for you tonight. Here they are. Hi, Roger. Congratulations on winning the Cam Argett Singer Award. You've been a winner consistently, whatever the contest. I've watched it many times. I'm a bit, I am a big fan. I brag about knowing you all the time. Thanks, and have a great evening. Dad, congratulations. Sorry I couldn't be there. But uh, again, congratulations on the award and, and your 50 years with Team Penske. We love you. Roger, congratulations on uh, the many, many, many years that you've been racing. And uh, I hope to follow in your footsteps. Thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, we've been in and around racetracks since 1968 and your teams have been above average that's a, an underestimate but uh, congratulations on this award and uh, it's great to have been on the uh, circuit with you and all your people and uh, advance relentlessly thank you 
Hey, Captain, I'm real glad to get you, so you get this award. I know you deserve it. And I hope I was able to contribute to your success. So have fun and enjoy it. And it was fun driving for you. Roger, I'm really sorry that I can't be there. I'd like to be back there. If you had sent me one of your planes, that would have been better. But listen, congratulations. You're the most deserving person to receive these awards. Fantastic, 50 years. I'm just happy to have been a part of it. You've been a great partner, good friend. Thank you very much for everything. Congratulations, Roger, on your award. I think it's fantastic. 50 years in racing is just super, and I'm just very proud that I was a little part of that success. I guess they're honoring you. Well, you're certainly deserving. Anybody could win even after 16 times stands alone. You're a fabulous individual. You're probably the best car owner ever. It's too bad I didn't get an opportunity to drive for you at one point or another. But I uh, had a lot of fun uh, on the other side of the fence from you. And uh, we've always had a war, and uh, we've, we've always been friends, and I've certainly admired your contribution to racing. Okay, RP, this is Robin Miller, your favorite journalist. We threatened to kill each other one day in the pits at Pocono, but thankfully we made up and became friends. And I gotta say this, we've had our battles, but you've always been professional. I always had a parking place at Michigan. You always return my phone calls. You never say much when we get quotes from you because you're pretty, you play things pretty close to the chest. But what you've accomplished in auto racing in the last 50 years is unprecedented, unparalleled, will never be topped. Uh, you're the smartest man I've ever met, and you're a racer to the core, so that's why you're getting this award. Congratulations. Hey, Roger. Glad to see a new award for you this year. That's great. You get them every year, but uh, I'm glad to hear they're honoring you up there, and uh, sorry I can't be there. It's too far from Texas. Congratulations. Photo bomb. Okay. <laughs> As I'm sure you recognize, the photo bombing individual was uh, Chip Ganassi, the inaugural winner of the Cameron Argensinger Award back in 2014. And I think we, we wanted to get a handheld mic to Chip. Chip, do you have a microphone back there? You, I know you wanted to stand, please, and make a few, say a few things about Roger Penske. Well, thanks, Jerry. Good evening, everyone. I, uh, I couldn't help but see when, uh, when Roger was on the cover of Sports Illustrated there, pal, I was still a student <laughs> in kindergarten. It was the ripe age of five. I was uh, five years old at that time. Uh, Dr. Jerry mentioned at the beginning of the program this evening that there were some bitter, bitter rivalries around. and I've never had a bitter rivalry with you, pal. Uh, I've had a great rivalry. And I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, just a few weeks ago at Le Mans, as the race was concluding, the first guy to send an email of congratulations was Roger. And uh, it meant a lot to me and our team, and I appreciate it. And, uh, but I can tell you that come the next IndyCar race, Last weekend in Elkhart Lake, he wanted to rip my eyeballs out. <laughs> and I wanted to rip his out. But when, 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 these, when these big wins come along and the championships, either way, he's always the first to write, or I'm, I think I'm always the first to write him and congratulate him, and I appreciate that. And uh, when, I was, uh, uh, when I was about 23 years old, I got to be on the phone one day with Roger, and it was one of the biggest days of my career. And I hope someday to have that kind of impact on a young man getting into the sport like you did, Roger, on me. And uh, it, it, it goes without saying, ladies and gentlemen, that this man tonight paved the way for people like me to come along. And I thank you for that, Roger. Thank you, Chip. Well, Roger Pinsky has enjoyed respect from not only his current cadre of drivers among his teams, but in so many drivers across numerous series that, that respect and admire what he has done and is currently doing. Take a look. Hello everyone at the IMRRC Awards Dinner. Sorry we couldn't be with you there in Watkins Men, but we're excited to be racing there soon. We just want to congratulate our boss, Roger Pensky, for the honor and the award he is receiving tonight. Way to go, RP. Thanks to everyone that's 
IMRRC for everything that they do to support motorsports. We appreciate what you do and please keep up the good work. See you soon and have a good time tonight. Hey Roger, congratulations on this incredible honor from the IMRRC. For all you have done in motorsports, it's well deserved, especially as Team Penske reaches its 50 years in motorsports. Congratulations again, and I hope everyone has a good evening in Watkins Glen International. Mr. Penske, congratulations on this very prestigious award from the IMRRC. As we celebrate 50 years of Team Penske, there's so much success you've had and so many awards, and I am truly grateful to have the opportunity to drive for you. It is with great pride that I call myself a Team Penske driver. And although I can't be with you tonight as we celebrate this event at Watkins Glen, I wish you the best and hope everyone there has a great evening. Hey, Roger, I just want to say congratulations on uh, being inducted into the International Motor Racing Research Center. Um, what an amazing accomplishment in your 50th year of racing. Uh, it's an honor to work for you. It's an honor to drive for you. Uh, you know, when you look at the list of drivers that race for you, it's, uh, it's such an amazing thing. But you're an amazing leader, uh, you know, that, that leads by example. Um, and how hard you work and how you, uh, you know, uh, attack each situation. Um, I learn so much from you every day, and uh, I hope you enjoy this moment. Thank you. We are delighted tonight to have two of uh, Roger's most successful Verizon IndyCar Series drivers with us, and I would like to ask them to please join me on the stage. First, he is one of only three men to win the Indy 500 four times and without a doubt, one of the best to ever sit in an open-wheel cockpit. Please welcome the Ovalmeister, Rick Mears. <laughs> Next, he is uh, one of the sport's most popular drivers. His charisma off the track is only surpassed by his talents on it. He is known, yes, for winning Dancing with the Stars, wearing a bright yellow suit years ago. And oh, by the way, he also won the Indy 500 three times and has come this close to winning it fourth or fifth time. Please welcome Elio Castroneves. <laughs> you going to grab a mic and have a seat here. Well, I'll sit in between you. All right. Check, check. Yeah, it's working. Testing, testing. While you're getting situated, is it true that you don't eat Raisin Bran because it reminds you too much of Hildebrand? I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A little, little inside joke from Indy 500 when he got a little tap. And, anyway, just That's joking. That's okay. That is okay. That is okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, gentlemen, uh, what we'd like for you to do, if you would, is uh, start out here. But I'd like for you to share, each of you share just a brief personal story uh, from your experience with uh, Roger Penske that, in your mind, epitomizes uh, what this man is all about. Rick, would you go first? Yeah, yeah really, it, it's, it, it wasn't a huge deal, but it, it's something that always stuck with me. Every time I, I kind of hear a question like this, I remember this. It was in the early, earlier days of Detroit Diesel, and uh, Roger had gone through one of the distribution plants, and uh, I believe it was in Ohio, and uh, he had kind of reorganized it and cleaned it up and kind of did it the Penske way. And then we had a, uh, he had a, a, a family, you know, an employee family day, you know, kind of a grand opening of it again. So we showed up to, to do the, the function there. And so, you know, we said hi to everybody and, and, and did a few things. And then we sat down at a table and, uh, and we're signing some autographs. So all the employees and their families were, were coming around to the table and, and getting the autographs. And I was sitting to, to Roger's right. And so every, every employee and family would come up to Roger and say, you know, how you doing? Everything okay? Is there anything we can do for you? You know, and, and we'd chat a little bit and sign the autographs and, and we'd go on. The next one would come up. Well, pretty soon uh, a gentleman and his wife walked up to the table and uh, he was one of the employees and, and Roger said the same thing. He said, how are you doing? You know, is everything okay? Is you know anything you need? And, um, and the gentleman's wife started laughing. She just, she just busted out laughing. And it kind of caught Roger by surprise. He tried and looks at her and says, you know, what's, what's so funny? And she said, you know, she said, I used to have to kick him out of bed to get him to go to work every day. Now he's up and gone before I even realize it. And that just, to me, you know, put it in a nutshell. He, he inspires that in people to, to feel a part of rather than in being there for the company. And, and I think, you know, over all the time, you know, I've been with Roger, it's always about the people. And, and 
you know, who you surround yourself with and take care of the people and, and the people are what make it happen. And that just kind of hit it on the head of, of how he takes care of the people and in the, and the, and the return. And, and um, it just really put it in a, in a nutshell for me and it's always stuck with me. Great story, Rick. <laughs> Elio? Well, actually, I'm, uh, uh, I'm learning a lot of stories, actually, tonight. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I didn't hear a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys know Roger better than me, and uh, it's, so, uh, it's so amazing. One of the stories that I have, actually, was uh, last week in, um, in Elkhart Lake. We're racing there, and uh, Roger's talking about, you know, the track uh, without the walls and pretty much similar uh, uh, um, uh, layout. And I was looking at the pictures here, and it's exactly how he was describing some of the racetracks without the wall. And uh, those are days that men are men and big cojones, you know. That, that's <laughs> big respect, big respect, I'm telling you. And, um, but what amazes me, the details that he's telling me, the stories and, um, and the memory. And, um, and I'm sure all of you here uh, know that uh, his memories, it's impressive, you know. And he knows people from first name and last name. I mean, I don't know what I have for breakfast. And um, <laughs> wait, I didn't have breakfast this morning. Okay. Um, and uh, but the thing is, um, uh, what impressed me most is when you um, when you're in the pit lane, and um, you know people are uh, walking around, and when they're passing by, and they kind of like glancing when Roger's standing in the pits. Everybody's always I notice everybody's always kind of glance to see if Roger's gonna say hello. And if Roger says hello or good morning, that person is like, yes, I got it. I got a good morning. My day started. So, which shows respect. And for me, I, I don't know anybody like, uh, like Roger, like someone that has that much respect. And uh, for me, it's just an honor to be drawing for you and for uh, Team Penske. Well said, Elio. I, you know, I've known Ro I've known Roger for 30 years and interviewed him a lot of times. I've never heard him say cojones before, but I, oh, I, 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 I just want to pass that along. Hey, Roger, <laughs> Roger, Roger has employed over 85 drivers in 50 years as an owner. Hey, you've driven for Roger, and now you work as a driver coach and driver mentor. How would you describe his relationship with drivers? Well, I, I think it's a very close relationship, and, and for myself, it's hard to speak for the others, but for the, the main thing, for me, just like a lot of the things that a lot of people are, are learning tonight that didn't realize how well he drove a race car and how, how good he is in a race car. And from a, from a driver's standpoint, like myself, it was, that was a, a dream car owner. Because right? he understood what it took. And, and you know, a lot of times, a lot of owners, you can go out there, you have, you're struggling and having a bad day, and they say, well, why don't you stand on the gas a little harder? Well, a lot of times you can't, you know. And I said, well, I can, but we won't bring the car back. But Roger, you know, he'd say, well, what's it doing? I'd say, well, the car's doing this or it's doing that. And he understood immediately what I was talking about. And he said, well, you can't drive it like that. We've got to fix it, you know. So that took a lot of pressure off of me as a driver and, and him understanding everything that was going on with the car. And he, and he knows, you know, he's been there, he's done that, and, and it doesn't matter who you are if the car's not working, you can't drive it. So, you know, that was just a huge, huge plus for me as a driver. But I think, you know, in his relationship with all the drivers are, are very similar to that. And, and from my standpoint, because I, I know they all see the same thing I did, you know, as far as being so understanding and that. And it's a big plus and a big relief, you know, from a driver's point. Yeah, he's walked in those shoes before. It's he understands absolutely. how difficult absolutely. that is. Elio, you, you're blessed to have the captain on the radio with you at every race. And we sit and listen to him in television. Fans at home can listen. Uh, but, I mean, here's a guy who's the winningest car owner, let alone the fact he was a great driver, but winningest car owner in motorsports history. Some might say that having this guy on the radio with you has got to be a little bit intimidating. Others might say it's comforting uh, to have this guy call in a strategy. What's it like? Well, the boss is always right, you know, <laughs> no matter what happens. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no. No, to be honest, uh, it's actually, it's comforting. I mean, Roger is an uh, encyclopedia, well, you know what I'm trying to say. He is, the, the, the experience that he has in racing, I tell you what, it's more than any uh, HP computer that you have around. I say HP because we're sponsored by HP. Chick ching <laughs> You got that? Um, you like that, Meryl? That was pretty good, huh? Um, what was it saying? Yeah, that's right. Um, 
the experience that he has, it's, it's just so awesome because anything that happens in the racetrack, you've got to make a decision in the split of a second. And, uh, and talking about decision, I mean, he, he's a man that makes a decision. And when he makes a decision, there is no way you're going to change it. You know? And I really try, and uh, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, that's, the, that's the beauty. I mean, uh, I feel since he has, he's been a, he has been a race car driver, he's been racing for his entire life, he's... So all these situations, it's actually, it's actually pretty positive, and uh, I feel that he's the key for me to win my first championship. So count on your boss. Let's do it. Absolutely. In, in the Grand Prix in Indianapolis, he made a call uh, on a pit stop late in the race, uh, and we're all going to commercial on ABC. We're thinking, we're thinking, now, wait a minute. And then, we, then, we, then it hit us. This is Roger Penske. I, I, who are we? Who are we? And, and you end up finishing second and I, almost I, won the race. I couldn't of believe it. Every time he comes out with calls like that, I'm like, how does he know that? I mean, it's, does, does he really know that? I mean, uh, of course he knows because uh, it's not once but many times he does that call, and it's, uh, it's a privilege to, uh, to be in this position. We'll finish up here quickly. Guys, I promise I'll give each one of you just a, a, a final sentence to say something to Roger Penske. Rick? Well, it, Roger, I, I just, on, on behalf of myself and, and the countless other, you know, lives of people that you have been able to help create, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm drawing a complete blank, but what you've helped mold in our, in our <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just drawing a complete blank on the word I'm trying to find. What you've made, you know, for, for my life. And, and countless others, it's just from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much. It's just, it's been impressive. Thank you. Well, Sorry about that. I think it's blank. Can't say it any better than that, Rick. Elio? No, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's hard. I it's, mean, it's uh, hard to follow somebody like, like Elio. No, 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 no. I, it's, it's hard to, to say, uh, you know, um, uh, what he done, he's done for everyone, for uh, each individual that tried to uh, drive a race car and tried to drive for Roger. It's... Uh, it's honoring, and uh, but it's uh, for me. Every time I I go to the race car, I have one feeling: it's to win, to win for my team, to win for for Roger. And when you have basically uh, that accomplishment, the reward that you have, that seeing Roger, the captain, your leader, happy is it's priceless. So, Team Penske is. For me, it's the best organization in motorsports history and in the world. And, but they are also, it's a phenomenal family. You know, we all work together as a family. We fight together as a family. We push each other as a family, but we celebrate as a family. And I can only thank you, Roger, to let me be part of this family. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Mears and Elio Castroneves, seven Indianapolis 500 Thank wins you. among these premiers, too. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll move these chairs out, and we have, next up, we have a very special Roger Penske tribute video that has been uh, written and narrated by one of my former broadcast colleagues and a voice you certainly will recognize, Sam Posey. Take a look. Racing is a thread that runs through Roger Penske's life, tying together all the diverse elements and exploits that make him what he is today. As a driver from 1960 to 1965, he won three national championships. He was named SCCA Driver of the Year by Sports Illustrated and Driver of the Year by the New York Times. He drove chaparrales for Jim Hall, a car of his own creation, the Zero X Special, a Formula One car with a full body, winning at the highest level that existed in American road racing at that time. He had a brilliant driving career ahead of him, but when the opportunity arose to own a dealership on the condition that he quit driving, he took it, laying the foundation for the business empire we know today. 
He has been the most successful car owner in the history of the sport. He won three Trans Am titles, two Can Am championships. He has 98 wins in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, 13 IndyCar championships, a win in Formula One, and the closed course speed record. But even these records pale in comparison to what he has achieved at the Indy 500. He first won the race in 1972 in his third try and won it most recently last year. He has won an incredible 16 times in five different decades with 11 different drivers. He is in a class with the Yankees, the Celtics and the Canadiens. Roger appears to have an unerring sense in his choices of both drivers and cars. But because his decisions are supported with such intelligence and commitment, he can make any decision into the right one just give him two years with the javelin. Napoleon once said that the greatest general is he who makes the fewest mistakes, and Roger makes very few. His attention to detail extends to appearance. His car is polished until they glow. His crew immaculate in matching uniforms. Other teams were quick to copy the Penske look, but matching the Penske lap times was another matter. But Roger was also willing to take chances. In 1994, he financed an entire engine for a single race to exploit a loophole in the Indy rules. Mercedes built the engine in secret, and Roger scored one of his most dominant victories. For those of us who knew Roger from racing, it can be hard to believe that his greatest successes may have come outside of it. For Roger, a synergy always existed between racing and business. His businesses sponsored his teams. The teams advertised his business. His trucking company operates around the world and employs over 25,000 people. He owns 151 dealerships here in the U.S. and 103 in Europe. He was asked to run for mayor of Detroit and he declined, but he agreed to organize the Super Bowl. The guests at Team Penske's 50th anniversary celebration this year included almost every top executive in the automotive industry. Roger has worked with all of them, transcending natural rivalries. Of course, everyone wants to work with a winner, but people also follow Roger and give him their best because he gives his best to them. It was said that any employee at any level of his company could call him at his home at any time, day or night, for any reason. Perhaps the most impressive thing about someone who has achieved so much is that he only used the best means to achieve it. In the end, maybe this honesty, integrity, and fairness is Roger's true unfair advantage. For those of you who may not know, Sam Posey actually drove for Roger Penske in the 1968 Trans Am Series. And when Sam recorded this video, uh, Team Penske did have 98 overall NASCAR wins. They now have 99, and they are on target to get their 100th this year, if not this weekend. Um, and on the business side, Penske Corporation continues to flourish, managing businesses that operate more than 3,300 locations worldwide and employ over 53,000 people around the world. Wow. Thanks to NASCAR Productions and Sam Posey for putting that piece together. By the way, Sam was in Daytona last night being inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame, uh, and his schedule would not allow him to be here tonight, but he wanted to send the video along and to congratulate Roger uh, for, uh, for a, a lifetime of motorsports achievement. At this time, uh, it's my pleasure again to welcome, uh, bring back to the podium, the chairman of the International Motor Racing Research Governing Council, Bobby Rahal. Bobby? Thank you, Doctor. It's my uh, distinct pleasure, now that we're getting close to this moment, to introduce the Arkitsinger family, and in particular, J.C. and Duke Arkitsinger. Cameron and Jean Arkitsinger had nine children, and tonight we have J.C., the eldest. I'm sorry, they made me put that in there, J.C. <laughs> Louise and Duke, the youngest. I think it is very, very safe to say that had it not been for the Argus Singer, there wouldn't be the Argus Singer family. There wouldn't be a Watkins Glen today. So please welcome J.C. and Duke to the stage.
Well, it's a great pleasure to be asked to represent the extended Argot Singer family. In addition to my sister Louise, her husband is there tonight, my wife, and uh, my brother Peter, who was a veteran driver, would have been here tonight. He's a wonderful speaker, but he had a commitment, a driving commitment at Mid-Ohio, so you all understand that, all you competitors. But better than Peter, his beautiful wife Shokia is here. Now, my mother Jean, who is still on the board of the governing board and is still very thoughtful, couldn't be here for health reasons tonight, but she sends her love. 30 years ago, when she was president of the Watkins Glen Public Library, she began the collection uh, encouraged by John Bishop, incidentally, who was the founder of IMSA. Incidentally, his wonderful son, Mitch, is here at our table and staying with us this weekend. And uh, the two of them uh, got together and formed this archive, which eventually became the basis of the IMRRC collection. My brother Michael, in later years, really became the driving force for the IMRRC. He was a great fundraiser, a veteran driver of 450 races, both here and in Europe, and he knew everyone in the racing world. But additionally, he was a famed auto historian and racing historian, and he had connections all over the world. And his books were highly acclaimed, and they benefited the center very much. Sadly, Michael died a year ago this week, and we miss him very much, and the IMRRC will miss him very much. One of his great books, the Donahue biography, had a, was graced with a foreword by our recipient tonight, and it, uh, is, it's a wonderful book. Now, my father Cameron, seven decades ago, had the energy and the vision to revive road racing in America, and uh, that set the template for the years to come. Those were exciting days, great adventure, and uh, our recipient tonight shares that spirit of adventure and vision. And we've heard all about his career and all the wonderful things he's done, but I just want to relate personal experience. To see this young man burst into the national scene, barely old enough to drive, with movie star good looks, it was a thrill for all of us. And one of the most audacious things he did with just barely one year of regional racing, he came to the 1959 Formula Libre at Watkins Glen and won the pole position. Now that was a race that was won by Sterling Moss, just remarkable. And then of course the next year he came back so good looking with a beautiful car, which you, you know the style he had, the Porsche RSK, and he just thrilled everyone. And we've heard about his career, uh, and I won't re recount all of those, all of those things. But uh, we're just thrilled that uh, to be here tonight, and uh, uh, we, um, uh, we, I, I recount that part of that story because I saw this, and what was so thrilling for me, I knew John Fitch and Walt Hanscom, but those are old guys. And the important thing was, this was a guy of our generation, the first of our generation who came of age in the, in the 1950s to do this. So it was particularly thrilling for us. And his rapid rise was just incredible. So it is a great honor for me to share the stage with, with Roger Penske tonight. And we're delighted to be here. Uh, Roger. And I hope you don't mind if I don't call you Mr. Penske, but I remember when you were Roger. Would you please come up? There is the Cameron Argus Singer Award for Roger Pinsky. And we're going to get, we'll get a photo op here just quickly with, with uh, the group around, around the, uh, if you would all just huddle in there together around the award.
Yeah, we're going to have ask Roger if he would sit there. So we're going to uh, sit down for a few minutes here and just chat uh, with, with Roger uh, just about this night and about his incredible career. I know everyone in this room tonight understands, Roger, all your accomplishments and as a mo in motorsports as a driver and owner, a businessman. But I want to turn back the clock a little bit and start out uh, with maybe some, something we don't know. In fact, I don't know. I know you were born in Shaker Heights, Ohio, and you grew up in your teenage years around Cleveland. What was it as a youngster that ignited your love for motorsports? Well, I guess, uh, you know, I love cars, and uh, I've said it before, uh, in 1951, my dad took me to the Indianapolis 500 as a young man at 14 years old, and I guess, uh, you know, once you're there, and you see the speed and you see the cars, uh, I never forgot that, and, you know, someday I wanted to be a driver, and obviously I had to make a change uh, in course and to become a businessman, but uh, I'd say it started back in those days, and you know, an uh, uh, interesting thing, I was the kid that my, wa my, wife, my mom wanted me to go to dancing school and have white, white gloves. Well, I'd do that on a Saturday, but I'd have my hands all dirty because I was working on my engines down in the, in the gunk. So I was uh, not a very happy camper at home in those days. But uh, I worked on cars. Uh, you know, I bought and sold cars when I was in school, and, but I always, uh, I always wanted to compete. We talked about your driving career, and that's something that doesn't get discussed very much. You uh, started driving in 1958, and within a few years, you had accumulated over 40 victories at places like Watkins Glen and, and Road America, Brands Hatch, Sebring, Daytona, uh, just so many places, Nassau, others. Uh, and, uh, and, and you were, we, we've already heard from several people, you were a two-time SCCA champion, a USAC champion. Uh, you were Sports Illustrated Driver of the Year. North American Driver of the Year by the New York Times and LA Times. Uh, you had a lot of success early on as a driver. Of all the things you accomplished in sports car racing, what, uh, what are you most proud of? Well, I think uh, I'm most proud of my family uh, and uh, my 13 grandchildren and my wife of 44 years. I think that uh, in today's world, that's probably the most important thing you have. <laughs> Certainly, uh, you know, the success uh, uh, we've had uh, in business. Uh, in fact, tonight I'm honored and humbled, uh, really, and almost embarrassed uh, uh, with, with all the comments. And I want to thank uh, all of you for those great comments. But, you know, to me, uh, uh, you know, what drives me every day is uh, to try to be better. And I think that, uh, you know, my dad taught me a long time ago of a coin that, uh, uh, many of our people have it says effort equals results and it's a funny thing that uh, people that work hard get results they're not lucky and I think that's kind of been the very simple slogan uh, that, that I've gone by for a long time and we continue to do that and I don't have a rear view mirror I just look out the windshield and obviously that's worked very very well Roger we we, we know that, that most people who know you professionally know that you're a very focused and intense individual and no one's going to outwork you. No one's going to, no one's going to burn daylight around you. But you're also one of the reasons I think you've been so successful is you're such a competitive individual, uh, both on and off the racetrack. And I heard of a story once uh, that you didn't like to lose on the racetrack. You also didn't like to lose bets. And you and Augie Pabst had a bet about uh, where someone would park a rental car. And uh, it was an unusual parking spot, and I think you won the bet. Tell us about that story. We might have a picture of where you parked that rental car. Well, you know, this, <laughs> this goes back uh, to, to Monterey, Laguna Seca, and uh, it was what you would call a Can-Am race in those days. I think it was the uh, San Francisco Examiner race, and uh, we used to have grid starts at that point, and Augie was driving for uh, Briggs Cunningham, and he stalled it on the start and got... He got hit in the rear end, and, uh, you know, he never even made, it, made a lap. And we came back to uh, the Mark Thomas Inn, which is fa fa famous inn in Monterey, and they were having a big party down at the pool. And, and I said to Augie, I said, you really had a bad day, but I said, I'll bet you $100 you wouldn't drive your rental car into the swimming pool. So sure enough, uh, and Peter Ryan was there. Some of you might have known Peter Ryan. So he said, he'll give you 100 also. So sure enough... Uh, Augie was down and uh, to his undershorts, 
turns on this Mustang and drove it right down between the dry, diving board and the, and the thing, right into the pool. I mean, it was, it was the most amazing thing I think I've ever, ever seen. And, of course, the people there were just stunned. And Mayor de Basia, who I knew well, he, he figured it was, I was the one that made him do that. But Walt Hanskin had his stuff in the trunk, so he strips, <laughs> he, strip, he strips down, dives in, gets the keys out, opens the trunk, and all of his stuff floated to the top. Now, the moral of that story is uh, next year we came back to stay there. We were lucky to get a room, and they had a, a tire in the pool that says no parking. What a great story. That's what we used to do, you know. Now we have sponsors, and you, you've got to be all buttoned up. You can't do that kind of stuff anymore. Elio, don't get any ideas. Um, Roger, you've had, you've had a very, very special relationship with all 85 of your drivers over the years, but you had a very unique bond and friendship with Mark Donahue. I can't let you go tonight without talking about Mark. Uh, what made him so special to you? Well, of course, Mark, uh, you know, was the bedrock, the start, really the driver that uh, gave us the initial success with the team. And Jay Signori's here tonight. Uh, I was uh, racing at Lime Rock, and Jay was, said, look at this uh, guy driving an Elva Courier. You should talk to him. And that's really how I met Mark, through Jay. And, and Mark came on the team, and you, know, you talk about Rick, quiet, getting the job done. That's the way uh, uh, Mark was, uh, you know, really underwhelming from a standpoint of personality, but so committed. I remember uh, we at the shop in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, we had an office and above it there was a little apartment. He'd never go home. Uh, he would go down there and uh, work almost all night, go up there and take a sleep, and then he'd drive the truck to the races. I mean, that's the commitment he had. And he was the one that really started to understand the technology uh, around racing and certainly what it meant and uh, you know obviously uh, you know to win the 72 indie race with him and, and then the success with the 91710 and the 91730 you know these are epic years for us for the team and he was a, a just a team player from start to finish he didn't really want any notoriety quite honestly i mean the less he notoriety got the better he was but he was uh, like a brother to me and uh, when we see the things and i see some of the pictures tonight and things that people show me uh, yeah, you know, how how big a part did he played uh, in our success? Uh, just just amazing, and you know I'll never forget him. You know, Roger, when I knew I was going to be here tonight, I, I I wanted to pay close attention over the races we had on ABC, and I was standing and I watched you at Belle Isle a few weeks ago. I waited for you to come out of your your uh, garage compound, and you walked down, and various race fans stopped and and uh, talked to you, and you signed autographs, and you were kind, so kind to stop on the way to pit road. And I went behind you and I talked to a gentleman that you had just signed an autograph to. And I said, hey, just out of curiosity, you know, what did Roger say? What are your impressions of Roger Penske? And this guy probably in his mid-50s said, he said, Roger Penske just stopped and talked to me. He just signed my card. He said, and he looked me square in the eye and said, Roger Penske makes everyone feel important. And then I followed you out the pit road and I watched the, the CEO of General Motors come up to you and you visited, and then there were some other race fans. Everybody who came by, whether they were a corporate CEO or just an average race fan, you stopped and talked to and spent time with. And, and not everyone in your position does that. Why is that important to you? Well, I think uh, <clears throat> your success is uh, about your human capital. It's about your people. And uh, what we've tried to do in our organization, and we talked about over 50,000 people, uh, we run a very flat organization. You know, we, we don't have hierarchy. We, we don't want it. We might have it, unfortunately. But what we need to be able to, you know, lead from the ground up, not from the top down. Think about that. So there's not a job that, uh, uh, that I would ask someone to do tonight or tomorrow, drive the truck tonight if I had to, if we had to get to the track or go home. And that's, that's what we try to do. And I think it's, uh, it's respect that I learned from my parents uh, and, and certainly the partnerships that we build our company with uh, you know, we've grown a great company, but it's been every single time it's been with partners uh, you know, who have put their name with our name. And I think that we, we, we have to be open to people and we have to accept criticism. And one thing that uh, we don't run an organization where nobody fails. Think about that. People do fail in our organization. 
And then if you don't make it and you're not getting the job done, we give you a chance. But if not, then you move on. And I think that's been, been part of our success because we want people to, to live and breathe our, our Team Penske, our brand. We want them to grow within the company and move up. And I would say that 90% uh, of the people that run our business today have come up from the organization. And you look at the, I'm looking at the race team the other day, and here's a kid that came and thumbed across the country uh, and, and went to UTI down in North Carolina, worked at Kmart, and, and now he's, he's, he's a chief mechanic. I mean, this was just in a matter of seven or eight years. So that's the environment. Uh, we want you to, if you work hard, you're going to make it. If you're not, you're going to go. And I think that what I've tried to do, when I go to the racetrack, I know Bobby does it and certainly Chip does it. And, and congratulations, Chip, to, you know, what you did for this country and, and for Ford Motor Company at Lamar is, is, you know, those are, no one can do that thing 50 years, but these guys got great teams. Mike Hall and people like that, you know, they live and breathe and they do anything for you. That's the great thing about racing. And I would say we're not, we're not in the racing business. We're racers, and there's a big difference. And the guys in this room here tonight, Bobby, and, and certainly some of you uh, that I don't know too well, but and Chip, uh, you know, we're racers. And, and when you do that, you've got to be ready to get on your knees and, uh, and make it happen. And I think that's the, kind of the common thread that we've tried to develop through the company. Final question, Roger. I know the, the evening's getting late, and I just want to ask you that, you know, many, many years from now, hopefully many, many, many years from now, when when you're gone and, and your name is brought up and folks who are motorsports enthusiasts say, wow, that, that Roger Penske, he was blank. What do you hope they say when they remember Roger Penske? Well, uh, I'm not ready to think about that right now. How's that? <laughs> I, got, I got a lot more work to do and uh, you hope they say he's inside buying a sandwich, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, uh, it, Roger, uh, but, you know, when, when people, I guess when people look at you and know you've won everything, you've won every major championship, all the crown jewels of races, Daytona, Indies, you know, 16 times, and, and people in this crowd, even outside people are asking, hey, what is there left for Roger to win? You know, what drives Roger Penske? So what does it? I mean, if we finish the evening, what is it that, that keeps you chasing victories week after week. I'm glad you do, but what keeps you going? I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's the team around me. It's the people that uh, you know, are expecting leadership and, uh, and want success. And uh, you know, if we're gonna be out there, we're gonna be doing our best. And I love to compete. I compete during the week, and I say my fishing trip and golf game is going to the races on the weekend. Many of you know that yourself. Uh, you know, we'll drive all night to get to a race. We'll fly all night to get home, but uh, it's, it's just, uh, you know, the competitive spirit inside. It's that effort equals results that, you know, my family, my dad uh, pushed me early on to, to try to be successful. But to me, uh, it, it's, it's all about a family. And, you know, I look out here in this, in this room. This is a big family. And uh, to think about the research center and the history uh, that, that's it's involved and encompassed, you know, in the walls of the research center and the great names and, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the Argett Singer family, uh, I knew Cam very well, and Mike, when he did uh, uh, the book on, on, Rick, on, uh, on Mark, and, and certainly uh, uh, J.C. and Duke, uh, uh, he was a special guy, and I think about Cam, I think about Bill Milliken, uh, John Fitch, and John Bishop. Many of you don't know those folks like I did, but I knew them personally and knew them well as friends, and they're the ones that started to look at this sport. Obviously what Cam did bringing road racing here was amazing. But then there was a the safety aspect. That group, and certainly John with IMSA and, and moving on, but three or four, they, the three of them mostly together, you know, built a safety culture, started it today, which now I look at these pictures and you're sitting up on top of the car, you know, you, you just got a t-shirt on and a pair of gloves and some helmet someone gave you, but today the safety where we've gone and, and this has really manifested itself, you know, because of people like Argett Singer and Fitch uh, and Bishop uh, and Milliken and, and many of the people here. And I, I would ask each one of you that's, that's involved in this sport or around this sport, you know, to think about the future and how can we make it better. 
and tapped that little. Every time a little guy asked me uh, to sign an autograph, I said, well, how old are you? He said, I'm 10. I said, you know, guess what? You know, you can have a team sometime. My dad took me to the races when I was 14, and it, it was great last weekend uh, uh, at Elkhart Lake to see the young people. And I think when Watkins Glen, uh, you know, has the road race here, Obviously, this weekend is special with a, with a six-hour race, but when we come back uh, with Indy cars, you know, th this is where we want to race. I think Bobby said it earlier. We want to go where there's people that love the sport and, and love to see the cars, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's a happening. And, and it's a clean sport. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hard work. We never have enough money to go as fast as we want to do. And there's a saying we say, speed costs money. How fast do you want to go? Is that right, Bobby? Is that right? And uh, the sponsors want more. And uh, Joe, I would say this, uh, you know, your commitment 15 years uh, uh, at uh, certainly uh, at, at this track and uh, what you've done uh, is amazing. Because you don't have sponsors to stay that long with you. But we've tried, Jerry, over the years uh, to, to make that a priority. We want to deliver more than what's expected. And that's what we're trying to do in racing. And I think it's why we've been successful. Could we ask uh, Bobby Rahal and Duke and J.C. Arkitsinger to please come back up and uh, on the stage with us? And ladies and gentlemen, those of you on your table, hopefully you have a glass of something. And we would ask for you to please stand as we are about to toast our honoree this evening. And they're going to hear you. What a, everyone have a glass? Come on up, dude. Come on up, JC. Bobby, get in here. What an incredible lifetime achievement in motorsports. If there was ever a Mount Rushmore for motorsports, this man's likeness would be front and center. Yeah, he would, this man's likeness would be front and center. Uh, to Roger Penske. Okay, we have one more, one more piece of business, and we'll be done for the evening. We'll let, we'll let Roger and his guys, if you want to go back and have a seat. We're almost done, and this is a special, special, to end it. At this time, I would... At this time, I would like to introduce uh, noted auto racing artist uh, Randy Owens, uh, who uh, has created a one-of-a-kind painting, and we'll let Randy tell you about how special this is. Thank you, thank you. This is a great uh, award. Can you hear me? This is a great award to be affiliated with. Uh, one thing I'd like to do first is bring this easel out. I think a lot of the people on this side of the room didn't get a chance to see it because of the, the, uh, the podium here. Um, it's been a real pleasure over the years to, to look at and paint Penske cars. Um, anyone that's ever familiar with painting knows you use different size brushes. Um, when they asked me to to do this piece, they said, do some of Penske's more prominent cars. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a bigger canvas. And, and, and really, the, the, in order to, to pay tribute to this great racer, you're going to need a much bigger canvas and a smaller brush. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to auction off this one-of-a-kind painting. It is one-of-a-kind. It has been autographed by Roger Pinsky. It has been autographed by Rick Mears. Um, and we probably could get Elio to come up and sign it as well. This is, just, just think about this. If you have a corporate office, a race shop, uh, I mean, there's only one of these folks. And so we're going to take a couple of minutes here at the end of the program 
and auction this off. And I'm not an auctioneer, but we, we're going to start the bidding at $2,500, and I know it's going to go for a lot more than that. So $2,500, do I hear $2,750, $2,750? I hear $3,000, $3,000, $3,000, $3,000 here. Thank you. $3,500. Let's go $3,500, $3,500, $3,500 over here. $5,000 in the back of the room. Thank you. $5,000, one of a kind. Let's go $5,500, $5,500, $5,500, $5,500, one of a kind. Roger Penske, autographed. Six thousand over here. Six thousand. Six thousand over here. Okay, thank you. Six thousand dollars. My, with the, we'll hold it up there. With the, with the lights, it's hard for me to see. Shout out and raise your hand if you would. It was hard, a little hard. There you go. Thank you for bringing those lights up. Do I hear sixty-five hundred? Sixty-five. I get a sixty-five. Thought I saw a sign. Sixty-five hundred here in the front of the room. Seven thousand. We got a seven thousand. Seven thousand over here. Thank you so much. Remember, the monies go. The International Motor Racing Research Center. It's for a fabulous cause for this incredible archive and museum. We're at seven thousand dollars, seventy eight thousand dollars. Thank you all. Eight thousand dollars. This one of a kind painting. Can you imagine walking into a business or a race shop and seeing this? Bobby Rahal, ten thousand dollars. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you so much. Hey, I I do want to say that we had we had a one of a kind for Chip Ganassi a few years ago. And several of his <clears throat> drivers bid on it. <laughs> uh, no pressure here, Elio. Where are you? <laughs> okay, keep going. Okay, we got ten thousand dollars. Do I hear eleven? Let's hear eleven from somebody. Eleven thousand left side of the room. How about twelve? Let's go twelve. Let's, anybody of twelve? Twelve on up. Let's hear. It. Let's see a number. Twelve. Get a hand. Bobby, Bobby, okay, 12, 12 for Bobby. All right, Bobby Rahal, $12,000. Folks, that is a steal. That is a bargain for a lifetime of memories from Roger Penske. Uh, 12, how about 12, five? 12, five. 12, $14,000. $14, you know, why am I saying 12, five? And people are, it should be the other way around. Okay, 14, 14. How about, let's go 15. Let's go 15. I'm a doctor, not an auctioneer. If you get a gallbladder, I can fix it. Let's go 15,000, 15,000. Let's go above 15. How about in the back of the room? Did I see a hand back there a moment ago? Someone was about to yell 17,5. I know it. I thought I heard it. And 16, 16, left side of the room, 16,000 for this painting. 16,5, 16,5, 16,5, 17, 17. We have a bid up front, $20,000. For this painting, twenty thousand dollars for the money going. How about that? And that is. How about is anyone going to going to go up twenty? Do I have twenty one? Twenty one? Twenty two? Twenty two? That's a pretty good number in the Penske stable right now. Twenty two. Yeah. How about that? Huh? Twenty two. Twenty two thousand dollars. Let's say twenty two. Twenty two going once. Twenty. How about twenty three? Anybody twenty three? Twenty two five. Twenty two five. Anybody got a twenty two five? Where Chip Ganassi? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. The guy that just won at Le Mans. The guy that just went in the Hall of Fame last night. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Always coming through for us. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay. Let's let's go. How about how about more? Twenty. Anybody see twenty-six? Twenty-seven five. 27.5 here on the left side of the room, all going for a great cause. International Motor Racing Research Center, you know, the archives, the museum, certainly. How about, we got 27.5, how about 28? We may well make it 28 even, great number. Are you scratching or are you bidding over here, sir? Okay. You almost, you almost went 28. <laughs> Buy a brush. Here we go. We got 27.5. 27.5. Anybody, anybody else here? 20, how about 28? Let's get 28. 28 is a good number. 28 is a good even number. How about 28? Anybody want to go 28? I'm going 27.5 going once. 27.5 going twice. Anybody with 28? Soul, 27.5. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you all for coming tonight, and we want to remind you 
that the, uh, to pick up your silent auction items on the way out. And thanks, by the way, to Racer Magazine for providing in each goodie bag a copy of the latest issue featuring Team Penske's 50 years in the sport. And don't forget to pick up, by the way, J.J. O'Malley's book, Daytona 24 Hours, A Definitive History of America's Great Endurance Race as You Leave. It has a foreword by Hurley Haywood, published by David Bull, and donated by Jim France. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for your contributions, and thanks for coming to pay such wonderful tribute to Roger Penske tonight. Good night, everybody.